all right, so I want to help you all out with OBS settings. Um, I did a previous take of this. So um, what, what we're going to do is instead of me sitting here and rambling about these settings and why you should use them, I'm going to go to the person I get resources from, and we're going to watch a bit of their videos. N maybe not the entire thing. One, we will, but it's pretty short. Um, I'm going to just tell you what matters or go to what matters. So Epos Vox, amazing content creator. Please, if you like this content or you like, you know, this stuff, uh, getting technical like I am about to, um, subscribe to this creator, please. They're amazing. Um, so yeah, this is our first video we're going to watch. We're going to watch this entire video because it's pretty important. I'm going to butt in to uh, say important things that might conflict with things a bit or my opinions, but um, you know, opinions are subjective. But anyways, I digress. I'm just going to play the video. YouTube streaming just got way better. The RTMPS updated spec I covered back in April is officially out of beta, and everyone can stream HEVC or AV1 video to YouTube and get significantly higher quality for your bitrate, or maintain the same quality while pushing a lower bitrate. To do this, open up OBS Studio version 29 and up, set your stream location to YouTube-RTMPS, and log in with your YouTube channel. Then in the output settings, you can choose HEVC or AV1 encoders where available instead of just H.264. Whether you have an NVIDIA GPU, Intel Arc GPU, or AMD RX 5000 series or above GPU, HEVC is a great option that will get you higher quality encodes sent to YouTube. The RX 580 also has HEVC, but from what I've seen, it's not worth using most of the time. Feel free to try it if you're still rocking Polaris though. This might even perform better for you than your H.264 streams did too, depending on your graphics card. If you're on NVIDIA RTX 4000 series, AMD RX 7000 series, or Intel Arc graphics cards, you can select your GPU's specific AV1 encoder as well. This is an even higher quality encoder. Those who see the AOM and SVT AV1 encoder options, those just run on your CPU, like X264, and are very tough to encode at a high quality in real time. I'd only ever recommend trying it on a dedicated streaming PC for console or dual PC streaming setups, and even then, GPU HEVC is probably the way to go over using those. I will say now that this update allows you to squeeze more quality for your bits that you send to YouTube, but YouTube always transcodes everything, with these streams usually to BP9. That's okay, but the usual rules of YouTube quality apply. 1080p will struggle to look good for any high detail, high action gameplay, and there's no secret trick to fixing that. Whether you're uploading a video or live streaming, YouTube does not allocate enough bitrate to their 1080p transcodes to look good to most gaming or high action creators. Instead, I highly recommend upscaling your stream to 1440p or 4K. This gives you much higher bitrate transcodes and thus higher quality to the viewers, even if you aren't playing or capturing native 1440p or 4K. You can do this right in OBS by going to Settings, Video, and then changing the Output Scaled Resolution box to 2560 by 1440 or 3840 by 2160. You'll have to delete what's there and type it manually. Then choose Area for the scaling method. The only real down downside here is that you can't use the lower latency modes for YouTube streams with 4K, but they do work with 1440p. First off, this is pretty important. A lot of people will think, um, d don't know, like, it's based off resolution. People will select 1440p and leave it at normal latency and be like, this is this is stupid. I'm going to go back to ultra low 1080p. Um, I wouldn't use normal latency. Normal latency is, like, really bad. You know, you hear YouTube streaming sucks um, at, like, 4K resolution. This is why. So, uh, yeah, stick to low latency 1440p, please. Or, uh, I mean, I wouldn't use 1080p for the reasons mentioned here. But, uh, yeah, I would just try to n not use normal latency. If I go back a bit, I do want to talk a bit about that area trend, uh, that area scaling thing that was mentioned right here. Um, I've tried this, and, like, yeah, it works. I, I feel like it looks better if you just do everything at native resolution. So, um, you know, if you want to scale, sure, do this. Um, but, uh... I find it looks better running at native. If if you're cool with having to rescale everything in your OBS scene, uh, just do it native. You know, um, it, I find it looks better personally. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then there is some. Uh, normally, this would default to normal latency. So make sure you change that. And there's another setting in here that I'll show you real quick. Um, but yeah, 4K. But they do work with 1440p. For bit rates, I recommend streaming 3.5 to 6-ish megabits per second for 1080p 60, though again, I recommend avoiding 1080p, then 5 to 15 megabits per second for 1440p 60, and 12 to 25 megabits per second for 4K 60. Higher is... 
These are usually a bit off from what NVIDIA recommends. I know for 1440p, they recommend a maximum of 14 uh, megabytes per second. And by the way, what this means in OBS is just add three zeros to the end. So for example, 1080p, you want to use 3.5K, you know, 3.5000 to 6000 um, in, in the um, in the box. For, it's in kilobytes, and that's how you convert it. So yeah, um, the soft cap that's mentioned is 50, but it's actually 51. But uh, we're never going to hit that, as you can see. <laughs> Is better to a degree. YouTube's soft cap is around 50 ish megabits per second, but you don't have to use higher bit rates to still look good. For comparisons of how these bit rates look on stream, check my original video and testing stream VODs in the description below. AMD RX 7000 users will need to set the preset to speed if using AV1 and 1440p or higher resolution. I forgot to unmute. <laughs> um, if you're on an AMD GPU, just know when I go through this preset setting, um, or just in general, set it to speed. Um, if you're on AV1, um, or yeah, for AV1 above 1080p, so um, yeah, which you're gonna do, uh, most likely. So yeah, mute. Come on. Combine this with the new YouTube control panel updates in OBS Studio version 30 beta, and YouTube streamers are getting quite a nice experience these days. Twitch, please update. As a bonus tip, when you're done... This is not important, but I guess I'll just let it play out. ...streaming after your VOD processes, which may take an hour or two, use the YouTube editor to trim off any dead air at the start and end of your stream, and maybe even clip out the ones during breaks, too, to help with viewer retention and watch time. Enjoy higher quality streams on any hardware going back to the GTX 10 series NVIDIA cards and AMD RX 5000 series and higher, and any ARC users out there. It's that simple. If you want more help with OBS, check out my definitive guide course at evosvox.gg slash course. All right, that's the first video out of the way. Second video, we're not going to watch the entire thing of it, and we are going to go through some OBS settings because this is a lot of information dumping, but yeah. So not all this video really applies. Um, simple mode gets upgraded, but I'm not going to like sit here. and You shouldn't use simple mode. Um, lossless audio is pretty cool. Um, I'll let this play out, and then there's a, a section on um, the settings to use right here um yeah i would I, I would just it's gonna be a lot of info dumping and then you know i'll come in here and say hey this is what this is what you just use if you just like tuned out everything so anyway I'm, I'm gonna let this play out and i'll butt in at the end there so many different options depending on the in, the container that you use you have mp4 mkv mov with MP4, you have lossless audio in the form of Apple's lossless codec, which is ALAC, ALAC, and then you have FLAC for the free version. FLAC is not currently working properly in DaVinci Resolve and will completely crash your project and like c corrupt your project file, so don't use that. But ALAC actually works just fine. You also have Opus available as well. Now, if you're using an MOV container, you get access to PCM Wave Uncompressed Audio, as we have been requesting for so long. And you can do it in even up to 32-bit float, which is really powerful because that means, now this won't help your streams, but for videos, it means if you clip due to your software filters or if you have a 32-bit float audio interface, I have not tested that yet, we'll test that in the future, but at least with your filters, if you clip, you can actually recover that clipping, as I will show you here. I have recorded this where my, you can see here, audio is set to zero. I have recorded it with just gain cranked to infinity and the output file is very distorted. We are clipping, clipping, clipping. But I can just come in here and drag it down. And now when we play it back, we are clipping, clipping, clipping. No distortion, no clipping. This is due to 32-bit float audio, which is in a way kind of like raw video, but for audio, like raw audio, in that it is impossible, more or less, to clip. I have a full explainer of 32-bit float in this review of an audio interface that comes with it. Uh, linked in the video description. It is incredibly powerful stuff. I'm gonna jump ahead. Uh, a lot of the audio stuff is like most people may not it may not affect you. It's just better quality, which isn't bad to have. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very like niche setting. But you know, if you want the highest quality, there you go. Recording formats specifically, like you ha you have some others that you don't really need to worry about. But specifically, actually, oh, uh, oh, this wasn't mentioned. It's the AV1 stuff later. Fragmented MP4, which is now the default, and fragmented MOV. These are files that will not corrupt 
when OBS crashes, like traditional MP4 will, this has been a long running issue and why for years my default has been to tell you to use MKV and eventually OBS resorted to defaulting to MKV because MKV is a file container that contains your video that won't corrupt or is less likely to corrupt if OBS crashes, if your computer loses power, whatever. Fragmented MP4 and MOV is very similar in that it won't do that. You may have some issues with your video editor supporting at least fragmented MOV as I've been working in the OBS Discord trying to test some issues I'm getting. I've had problems with fragmented MOV with DaVinci Resolve when it came out to the public, so um, I don't know if it works now. It, you know, where this was 29.1, you know, we're a full version ahead now on 30, so it might be fixed. DaVinci also had some updates, so maybe they fixed it in one of the updates, but um, yeah, I would just test it out first before I uh, do it for an actual video, so. Yeah. Getting some corruption and things like that, depending on format. Hopefully, they'll have all that fixed before the beta comes, you know, to public release for the non beta version. But the advantage here is if you use one of these formats and then you still remux, which they have to fix the remux or to support, but remux to MP4 or MOV traditionally, you no longer have the weird audio sync issues in Adobe Premiere Pro that a lot of people have due to the weird time scale issue that MKV files have compared to what Adobe Premiere expects. So that is very exciting. So my recording setup moving forward will be fragmented MOV once it works for me. So for me, it's just gonna be MOV. NVIDIA HEVC and PCM 32-bit float audio. Once things are fixed up a little bit, my recommendation will probably be fragmented MOV FFmpeg 32-bit float audio for your recordings. This will be completely uncompressed, so you don't have compressed audio going into your recording. You don't got to worry about generational loss or anything like that. And you get that safer container again, probably within an, probably for another beta update or so before that's fully implemented. The reason that you use, or I'm recommending using MOV instead of MP4 here is because MP4 does not support PCM audio. It's just completely uncompressed. Now you could still use the Apple lossless audio codec with MP4 totally fine. It's lossless. You're not going to have any issues with it, but you don't get 32-bit float. So lots of technical jargon. That's pretty much a good TLDR, like what to do, you know, to use there. Um, fragmented uh, MOV or MOV if you're having issues. Um, NVIDIA NVENC HEVC or AV1 for your video encoder. I would recommend using AV1 over that. And then audio encoder, 32-bit float, you know. Uh, the PCM one. And then, you know, we talked about more about AV1 streaming and yada yada stringer. If you use transitions, um, you get the option to uh, hit a checkbox now to uh, pre-render them into memory. Uh, yeah, preload video to RAM. So um, that's pretty nice if you <coughs> if you do that. But um, yeah, it, it's a minor thing. Here's another video on Twitch streaming or uh, Twitch settings. We're not going to watch it, though, because I'm only focusing on YouTube here. I also have this NVIDIA guide, uh, because a lot of this video talked about some settings, but didn't say everything. I'm going to pull from this for other stuff. First thing, though, you need to run a speed test. So go to speedtest.net, um, and then click go, and that's going to run a speed test. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and actually apply these settings to OBS. Um, general, just a bunch of like aesthetic stuff with like snapping, and it's not going to affect your quality. Under source, um, YouTube RTMPS is good for most cases, or just Twitch if you're going to go to Twitch. If you want to do HDR streams, uh, hit show all and go to YouTube HLS. So um, we're not doing that. You might want to check this box here, ignore streaming service recommendations, because we're going to go over this 160 kilobytes for the audio bitrate. Under output, um, under streaming, you want to make sure, I mean, there's no setting here. Um, make sure your audio track is the track with everything in it, because you want everything in, to be in your stream. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Video encoder, um, you know, as mentioned, NVIDIA, NVENC, um, HEVC or AV1 for YouTube. Um, and then if you're on Twitch, H.264. Um, you know, AMD has their versions as well. So does Intel with QuickSync. Um, and uh, Apple has their own hardware encoder um, with these same things. Um, don't use AOM, AV1, SVT, AV1, or X264. Just don't use those. Um, so yeah. Um, under rate control, we want it to be CBR. Let's see how that uh, speed test is going. All right, cool. So for our bit rate, that was like perfectly timed. We want to take your oh, that's kind of high. Okay, cool. Uh, well, you would take your upload speed, add three zeros to it, maybe give or take some. The best way to do is take your upload speed, go to this NVIDIA chart, um, and then 
right here they have a thing for um, what resolution to run. So my upload speed was in the 200, so it doesn't really matter. But you know, I would just go here, be like, okay, mine is 50, go with 40. What they're doing here, like really, you could add three zeros to this number and use that as your bitrate. That is perfectly fine, but you're not really giving any wiggle room for other devices, and that's why they subtract some um, some number to get this bitrate, just just to give wiggle room for other devices. And like you know, um, uploads we can fluctuate from this number. So if it's lower than this number and you set it to exactly that number, you're going to be losing some frames and, and stuff, um, which isn't good. Something to note here, as you'll see, is like quality differences between H.264 and HEVC are like massively different. You know, to do 1440p uh, in H.264, well, it's not even listed here, but I had to run about 20 to 25 megabytes, whereas now it's 15, which is significantly um, less quality, or even 12, you know? Um, yeah, much better. Um, but yeah, try to prioritize 1440p 60, um, but I, I would prioritize frame rate over resolution you know i would do 1080p 60 go up to 1440p 60 if you can um you get the point just just try to stay at 1440p 60 and go from there but uh if you have to go down i would do 1080p 60 over 1440p 30 even with the youtube stuff uh you know youtube um compression um with, with uh 1080p content looking actually garbage um especially if you're playing like splatoon high frame rate games where that matters um but anyways yeah keyframe interval this stuff wasn't mentioned in any of the videos that i played um so if we go over here to ob uh, to the to the nvidia settings it'll say in here what to use and you can apply this to other gpus um so yeah uh where is it uh streaming settings here we go oopsie um well yeah generally you can just follow this in keyframe interval 2 preset p6 p7 is better like it does uh, but like uh, in, in testing from EposVox in previous videos, um, he found that like it generally it's either bugged um, or it doesn't like actually increase. It, it, like it uses more hardware but doesn't look any better. So P6 is what everyone's been recommending for that reason. Tuning is at high quality. I believe the preset on um, on AMD GPUs is different. They use the speed for anything above 1080p in AV1. Um, that was mentioned back in that one EposVox video we watched. Multipass is set to quarter resolution. I don't know why, but I guess it's efficient. Because um, I, I find working in full res is pretty demanding. I accidentally had it on there once. Profile is high. Check both of these boxes. Max B frames is uh, 4 if this is checked. If it's unchecked, you set it to 2. But leave it checked and do it 4. Uh, this is an older same thing they recommended. So you can even see using H.264 over here. Uh, in, in the text, it actually says... Um, set to four if you uncheck, you know. Um, in the and, and you know it might be a bit different. You might not have a lot of these settings if you're on like an AMD GPU or in, on Apple's encoder and stuff. But try to get as close as you can get to these settings. It may not be exactly the same unless you're on an NVIDIA GPU. So yeah, and like even if you're using AV1, it might be different. I don't know. Under recording, um, what I would do is you know MOV. I've had issues with fragments in MOV, but you know give it a shot. I would select fragmented first MOV, give it a shot, and then if it doesn't work in a test video, use MOV. Um, HEVC or AV1 for your NVIDIA, you get the point. Um, even if you are Twitch streaming, you know, these are videos, so yeah, as long as you're not recording a stream at the same time. Uh, for audio encoder, 32 bit float, I would say for video encoder, you know, I said HEVC and AV1, but if you are streaming and recording at the same time, uh, use your stream encoder, please. Because otherwise, it's doing two different separate tasks of encoding. And uh, most GPUs, unless you're probably on like a 40 series GPU, you might be fine. I don't know. I'm on a 2080 Super, and it can't do recording and streaming with these settings. So you might have to use your stream encoder. I think audio is fine normally. Um, I don't really have issues with that. Right control is CQP, CQ level. NVIDIA recommends 15 on their CQ level, I think. Um, what is this? CQ level on... Uh, this is recording, right? Yeah. See, they still recommend uh, MKV, which isn't true. Um, uh, and like H.264, yada, yada. Um, they recommend CQP. They say 15. Um, EposVox was saying to do a different number. Uh, I'm just going to roll it 15 because they say NVIDIA... Uh, you can decrease to get higher quality. So I'm just going to stick with 15. 
Uh, keyframe interval is two. Um, I think that's what they recommend. Yeah, zero or two. Um, P6, high quality tuning. You get the gist. Uh, profile is either main or main 10. Um, main 10 is 10 bit. E plus Fox went through this in one of their videos we didn't play. Um, and YouTube doesn't support 10 bit, but you know, in the future it will, and that will feature preview. But like right now, it's not going to look good. Um, so I would do main if you care about right now and then in the future it'll look a bit outdated. Um, but yeah, max B frames is the same setting. This is supposed to be four, not two. And then, you know, check the box, yada, yada. Audio. Uh, I would settle these tracks to 320. Back a while ago, there was an update to both Twitch and YouTube. Um, Twitch came later, obviously. Um, that allowed the audio bitrate to be separate from video. So, um, it wouldn't affect your video quality. So, uh, set it to 320. Um, because you can. It's higher quality audio. Why not? Um, yeah, and you know, it does uh, bypass this audio setting that we we did here, so that's why I said check the box. Um, the replay buffer is just uh, replays. And then this is audio settings, you know, 48 kilohertz, stereo, you get the point. Desktop audio devices, microphones. Um, this is like a more accurate meter type for your audio down here. Um, if you care, um, it, it says it uses up more of your CPU. Um, and then under video, you know, this is your resolution stuff, your frame rates. Um, and then downscaling if this is different. Um, yeah, this was mentioned in the video. Uh, try to do 1440p for YouTube streaming, and uh, you know if you can. Um, so yeah. And then under advanced, um, here's some older settings that I didn't get to show you um, in Epos Fox's videos. Process priority. This wasn't mentioned, but I like to keep it high. It's up to you. You can do whatever you want here. Um, it's just you know it might prioritize the game or prioritize this like. Um, you know, something with like a low process priority or something underneath high, uh, this will be prioritized over over uh, this. So if a game is set to like above normal, OBS gets the priority. So uh, most games are set to high as well. So yeah, um, I I just don't want OBS losing any um, any you know quality just because I'm playing a game at the same time. Um, Color format in V12 uh, for SDR, color space, Rec. 709, color range limited. Everything should be in limited. Uh, like ev anything video related on YouTube or any video platform <coughs> should be in limited uh, color range, even though this will con uh, conflict with consoles, especially the Switch. Um, for HDR, um, I guess for HDR settings generally, this won't apply like 90% of you. As I said, YouTube HLS. Um, where else? There's some other settings here to change. Uh, main 10, because that, that uh, HDR is 10-bit. Um, that is a thing to change, and I think that is most of the stuff here. Yeah. Um, and then back into the advanced settings where we were. Do uh, P010. Uh, Rec 2100 PQ. HL, uh, you can use HLG, but PQ is recommended. I am copying what Equals Fox is saying. Leave this at limited. And then you can mess with these if you know what you're doing, but I don't, so uh, yeah. I wouldn't do HDR streaming personally. Um, it's a mess. Um, but yeah, it's it's there if you want to do it, and you know if you have the capability. Um, I, I'm just like, eh. If I'm doing my Switch, I'm not going to bother with it unless I'm playing uh, uh, on the PS5 or something. Um, but yeah, that's general stream settings. Some general tips to up. First of all, you probably should have updated OBS. I think I mentioned this too. If you go to help check for updates it'll check for an update and you can download it there if you're on a really 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 old version of OBS um, that won't even be there you have to go to the website and up, you know download it again um, another thing is if you right click on audio mixer hit advanced audio properties um, this is audio monitoring to hear stuff through your headphones on the right over here I'm gonna uncheck this to show everything um, these are your audio tracks you want one track for everything uh, these two things are I don't use that microphone the camera doesn't have a mic and then the Brio is a webcam and that, that microphone is pretty shitty so I, I leave them unchecked just because but you can leave them checked if you want I like to have everything that I, I want in one source one track um, for streams you know that's pretty important and then one track per device for videos um, that way when I'm recording and my desktop audio like earlier was uh, a bit too low or too high I can adjust it in post um, if I wanted to. I'm not editing this though. So, um, yeah. And then microphones in its own track, so I can adjust that volume separately. And then my capture card. Um, yeah. Um, so that's really an important thing to do. I like to keep uh, track one or the track with everything in it in my videos, uh, just to use the as like a syncing point. But it, it's not in the final video. You know, it's just there to help sync up audio because you can move things around. 
and uh, it gets desynced. I digress. Um, another thing that's important is the stats. So these settings are pretty demanding that we went through today. So uh, if you go up here to docs and you check on uh, stats, YouTube live control panel and chat, um, well, these two are optional, but stats is what this one is. Um, and you can drag it to dock it. It, it kind of works, um, but yeah. Um, what uh, the important settings in this stats panel are uh, frames missed due to rendering lag and skip frames due to encoding lag. Um, these two are purely hardware based. If you're seeing drop frames here, you need to change your settings. You're taxing your um, encoders on your GPU a bit too much, or a CPU if you went that decision, even though I highly told you not to. Um, but yeah, um, uh, there is like a threshold where this will drop and you won't see an encoding overload. Um, so yeah, and then there's drop frames due to network. Uh, this is your internet dropping frames. That's what's visible down here and stuff. Um, yeah, it's re you really wanted to keep an eye on this, um, especially after these settings because they're pretty pretty demanding. Uh, chat is just chat. YouTube live control panel is a live control panel. So yeah, that's OBS settings. A good. Um, TLDR. I guess one more thing is on uh, your capture card. Let me pull up my switch right now. Um, a good thing to note, um, I like to set my capture card settings um, manually in here. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I run with 1440p. I'm on a PCIe capture card. Um, but TLDR, set your frame rate to 60 or whatever you can do. Um, video format to NV12. Color space rec 709, color range, whatever the console is that you're using is the better option. Uh, I used to do limited here, and I noticed that there was um, a slight difference, that it didn't look quite normal in the video uh, or in the stream. Um, so I would flip around with this. Um, the switch. So a good note for, like, even on just general TVs, to be honest. Uh, if we go down here to TV settings, RGB range, um, if I flip the full, you see there's no, no change, no screen flicker. That means it's outputting full. Usually on your TV, you want to use the full setting as well, or on whatever. You know, there should be like a full or like a standard option or something. Maybe, maybe it's standard. I don't know. Um, yeah, you want to use that option um, on your device. Um, yeah. Uh, so I find here, even though we are going to limit it as an output, like for the entire thing, uh, I, I think full works better, but it might vary from capture card to capture card. I don't know. Um, the best way to tell if it's incorrect is your blocks get crushed so like as a good example on your Splatoon 3 game icon you can see there's a bit of black and a bit of gray in the background um, stuff like that is what you want to look for if it's incorrect they will look um, the same they'll, they'll just look all black um, you know that SRB2 dudes videos showcase it a lot in the menus not to like um, pinpoint that but that's kind of what I uh, what I first think of when I when I think of that that issue I think that SRB2 dudes content um, reflects that. I'm not going to pull it up, but um, yeah, I don't want to like shame SRB2 dude there for, for that, but um, anyways, um, yeah. Um, maybe these settings aren't the right thing to use, because like, you know, this is probably converting what your thing natively does. I don't know. Uh, buffering d disabled, I find, is better. It's like less latency and stuff, so um, yeah. Uh, for uh, a quick thing on RGB ranges for devices, um, Nintendo Switch and PS5, I don't know about PS4, but I know PS5, they all use the full output range, you know, high, whatever, um, so set your TV accordingly, and OBS here, uh, maybe, uh, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, or, you know, Series S as well, um, and Wii U, um, those all output on, uh, on low, or limited, so set things accordingly for that, which it's nice to use limited, because it's just straight through, same the entire way through. Um, but yeah, it's dumb to switch has to do that. So if you, if you do play Splatoon 1 on the Wii U, you gotta change that setting every time, which is really, really annoying. Um, yeah, that's capture card settings out of the way. Um, and then let's hop into the YouTube Live Control Panel. Like, very last thing. I know we're hitting the 30 minute mark. Um, so yeah. A couple things. One, low latency. Make sure it's checked. DVR. You probably want that on. Um, so viewers can go back in your stream. And then this unlist thing, if it's checked, undo it because of the live pain. I mean, it, it's up to you, really. Um, yeah, none of these will get uh, customized. Like, if you want tags, you want to add a game here, you might have to change your category to gaming. Th this is all default. You might want to change it to, like, um, newest, y or allow all comments if you're a small channel like me um, who, with not much attention. You get the gist. Um, but the big one is under customization. It always unchecks live chat replay. Um, 
which means when someone goes back and watches your stream later as a video, they won't see the live chat, which is really annoying. So you gotta check this every time. Uh, yeah, so to so do that. Um, anytime you start a stream through OBS, that happens. Um, stream health on here will tell you, you know, what to do for stream and, and stuff. Y you probably know that. So yeah, that's general recommendations for OBS settings. I think I did a good job at showing you um, things. Uh, yeah, sorry I couldn't give a better example or just an example of what to look for on that RGB setting, um, but hopefully so. I will say about that RGB setting real quick, um, if you're on the Wii U running, you know, a, a low RGB range on when your TV or display is at the high, it raises uh, black levels and then blacks kind of look a bit gray. It's hard to tell, especially on LCD displays, um, because they already output gray or black a bit raised than an OLED would. Um, so it's, it's hard to tell, um, honestly. Um, but uh, once you spot it and realize, oh, this is wrong, maybe after a while you understand it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm on an OLED, though, so it's kind of easy to, to pinpoint. I digress. Um, yeah, that's the definitive uh, OBS settings um, guide. So uh, yeah, hope you, you enjoy and found this useful. And yeah, I guess uh, one last thing. Why is this important? Why do we just go through the entire 30-minute video? I should have started with this. Um, for those running low quality streams on YouTube, uh, why? If it's a bandwidth limitation, HEVC is going to keep your bit rates the same and you're going to get a better, or the same. You're going to be uh, at a higher quality for that same bit rate. Um, H.264 has that distinct blocky like look um, and that is literally gone with HEVC. Um, H.264 blocky. Let's see if this can just randomly pull up a thing. Um, <laughs> really? So yeah, like uh, like this. Uh, where am I going? Don't know. Uh, let me make this full screen so it's easier to to show you. If you ever see blockiness like this, um, you know, you can see the grass over here. Everything looks really blocky. Um, it's especially noticeable in more vibrant games, especially Splatoon. You really see the pixels. Or it looks like it's pixels, but it's not. This is all an H.264 setting thing. Y you can even see around the menus here. It looks rough, really bad. Um, th uh, granted, that wasn't the roughest setting. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it looks a lot better on um, newer in, on H uh, H.265 or HEVC, um, and AV1 is even better. Um, it's even more efficient, but um, not many, not much hardware supports it. Um, yeah, so if you're running on those really low bitrate streams in H.264 and it looks like actual actual shit, um, yeah, switching to HEVC at the same bitrate will probably look like an actual high quality stream or a good stream that people would want to watch instead of that pixelated mess that I showed you. Um, and then, you know, maybe you're using a pretty high setting on um, on H.264 and you're like, why do I switch to HEVC? You know, I was in that Paul Black. Well, HEVC will one, give you a better quality and two, be more efficient. Instead of running 2500 bitrate, um, that's 25 with three zeros, that's adding an extra zero to this. Um, yeah, that now takes you down to, to running at 15K, which is a lot more efficient. That frees up more bandwidth for other devices, um, and it looks better. So just, just I don't, I wouldn't, uh, if you care about quality, HEVC and AV1 is the way to go, um, in my opinion. But, you know, it is personal preference. But, yeah, H H.264 is pretty old now, so, um, yeah. So that's general uh, settings and why they're important for everyone. Unless you're maybe a Twitch streamer. In that case, watch that other video and apply those settings because, yeah. So yeah, hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, sorry I went over by five minutes. <laughs>